you know, it used to be so the get the price would go up, and then everyone switched. They, all of a sudden, people start buying efficient cars, and then the price would go down, and then they're back to buying their SUVs again. But the difference now is that when they're buying their SUVs, they're gonna they're gonna be electric. Um, Ford is making an electric truck heavily marketed in Texas, which is the biggest pickup truck market in the world. Introducing the all-electric F-150 Lightning, the smartest, most innovative F-150 we've ever built. This is a shift, and it's it's not you can't really put the genie back in the bottle on this one. Um, but it's like you you know it's a tricky business um, for the Democrats who are sort of you know very much pushing a, a climate. Uh, policy, you know, pushing climate policy, and that they want to see this shift, but they don't necessarily want to see people paying a lot for energy, um, which is going to be the tricky business. We're going to have this, in my mind, but this is going to be an ongoing source of tension. It's been ever since the climate movement started. We've seen this in Europe already with the Yellow Vest movement, which in part, you know, to do with energy prices, which had to do with climate policy. And I think this is going to be a push and pull, like, you know, uh, you hear how cheap wind and solar are very true they're they're hugely uh, they, it's amazing how much their costs have come down but you still have to invest in redoing the grid batteries all these other things you have to do around those technologies you have to take that you're taking uh, existing you know coal plants out of the system all this stuff costs money we're trying to do an energy transition in basically 10 20 years usually these things take close to a century so we're trying to do this at warp speed. It's going to be bumpy, I think.